TypeScript, the only work TypeScript is doing is just to check for your types. That's just what TypeScript is doing. So it's more like, according to people, or, or what most people will call it, they call it the super superscript of JavaScript. So why they call it superscript of JavaScript is that everything you know that is inside JavaScript is also inside of TypeScript. So it's more like TypeScript now add type, static type in JavaScript. So for instance, you know, like in C now, if you are dealing with C programming, you know, if like want to declare uh, an integer, we can't just come and say something like X, or we can say maybe let X equal to four. You know, it won't work. It has to be int X equal to four. And if it's a, a string, it has to be char S as a pointer equal to maybe uh, Gideon, something like this. So that is what TypeScript is doing because in normal JavaScript, right? You know, you can say, you can just say let X equal to, then you give it anything you want. So, but TypeScript now will force you to now like declare what is the data type of X? What is X expected to carry? Is it a number? Is it a string? Is it a Boolean? Or is it any other kind of data? So that's what TypeScript is just all about, in essence. Yes. So so now, um, there are different aspects of uh, TypeScript, or different ways TypeScript is being used to force uh, type checking in JavaScript. So and one of it is that it's used for the primitive data types. Now, if you study JavaScript, you find out that they say there are seven data types in JavaScript. There are eight data types, right? So, and inside of this eight, you have string, you have number, you have boolean, you have um, undefined, you have null, undefined, you have null, then you have object. So, things like array falls under object, things like map, things like uh, set, all these ones falls under object something like that so now let's look at this first question they say write an interface named student that accepts the following element now before we even go into what an interface is now because almost all of the alx tasks they, they are just asking for interface interface so before we even get where an interface is let's even look at from the basics now let's say we want to declare a string a number and a boolean now in TypeScript, you know in JavaScript, if you want to declare, okay, let me move to inside the JS folder and then create a file. I think they call it uh, main.ts, yes. So, you know, in JavaScript, right, if you want to create like a number in JavaScript, you can just say const x or const number is equal to maybe 85 if you want to create a um a string let me increase it if you want to create a string we can say maybe const um maybe word right then we do something like this maybe pld then if you want to create a boolean we can say maybe const bool then we'll, we'll use either true or false. Let me use false here. So this is in JavaScript. Now, if you look at it here, there's nothing here that is showing us that this number, the data type, should be a number. Or this word, the data type, should be a string or this bool the data type should be a boolean there's actually nothing that's enforcing it here you understand so there are situations where <clears throat> if care is not taken maybe in a situation where instead of const we use let for num right later on we can now come back here 
and now say norm is equal to maybe something like this gideon and if 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 care is not taken because of how javascript is you know it's weird behavior it might end up accepting this one after here we have said is a number oh. here now we are changing it to string it might end up accepting it so why did they bring about typescript imagine you create a program you created a program and the program the variable is supposed to accept a number but because you are using javascript and there's no way for you to check maybe somebody came to update the database he now went and now introduced a string into the variable that was supposed to be a number you know by that act alone there's a possibility that the application might break at some point so that is why typescript have to now come in place now in typescript if we are to declare all these ones for the number now we we'll have something like this number now what is number right or let me use the word um let me say h yes let me use h let me not use the data type so now what is h of course in in javascript in c you know we you say integer int right but in javascript it uses number both for float or both for integer or, or it refers to as number so now what h will be is we want it to be a data type of number so what you will do the variable then next followed by a column then next followed by what the data type now we want h the data type of h to be a number and then here after that we can then give it its value what will be its value 85 now at some point if i come back within my code and i'll say number uh, and i'll say h and i'll give h maybe a boolean value true now if i run this script now it's not going to compile why because here i've said that h should be a number and here i'm not giving h a quantity that is not number which of course is true and true you know true is a boolean value so in that case it's going to throw an error so it means that TypeScript will help you check against all this issue of type and all that. If it's JavaScript now, of course, you know, it's just let age 85. We can come down and say age is true. And if care is not taken, it will accept it that way and move on. Uh -huh. But TypeScript is very strict in that. So far, you have declared that this variable should have a data type of number. Once anybody is entering anything or once anybody is storing anything to that variable that is other than a number, it will not accept so that's for number then let's say for string now for word let's say okay name right name should be a string so we we'll give it data type of a string and then equal to here we can say alx uh, pld right then for the boolean we can say const right bool now what data type should it have it should have a boolean boolean data type and then we can maybe take it to be true or here we can say uh, is young so here of course okay no this one is false so because 80 85 years is false <laughs> so we we'll put false of course the person is not young yeah so this is typescript when it comes to just declaring your variables so uh i don't know if you guys understand yeah, it's okay okay so that's i don't just want to jump into this one because alx just decided to jump into interface straight up so we still get to interface let's look at it on a general level so the next thing on my list right we have arrays now if you observe right if you look at arrays in general you'll find out that you can either have let's say const array h right so let's say this one now maybe uh, 12 52 14 25 so if you look at this one now it's more like an array of h so this array carries one two three four about four different h and we can also have an array of name right array of name here we can say um maybe we here we we'll say alx we we'll say software engineering we we'll say 
cohort 15. So this is an array of string. This one is an array of numbers because it's just carrying numbers. This one is an array of string because it's carrying string. So now this is in JavaScript. If you want to declare it in JavaScript, with this you are good to go. But when you are talking of TypeScript now, TypeScript now you have to show that okay, this is an array and it's not just an array but an array of number in such a way that if somebody is trying to maybe update the value of the array and is now updating it with a string the his code will not compile or maybe the array is an array of a string and then he's trying to update the array with a number his code is not going to compile so how is that done now if you check here there are two ways of doing it either you mention the name of the data type if it's an array of string you just put string and then the symbol of your array if it's an array of numbers you put number and then the symbol of your array if it's an array of boolean you put uh, boolean and then the symbol of an array or you go by this way array and what is the data string array what is the data type number so here now if we are to type this one in TypeScript now, use it in TypeScript. This one is going to be const array h. Now we are now going. We are now going to have column. Remember. Now what are we having? We are having array of what number. So we have number and then this symbol. So equal to here we will now put our array twelve, our element fifty two, fourteen and twenty five. Why for this one for the name we have const array of name right what what is the data type now if you want to use the second method method remember you use array and then you use this your symbol and then what is it is a string the data type is string you want the array to carry string then equal to here you now put the string alx right se right and then the other one is what c15 so uh i don't know the i think somebody on me question please okay okay please go on i have a question okay um, please this go. um the second method of of um declaring on array using typescript yes that's generic right that's this one right yeah, this array um, string, yeah. Yes. Generic. Yes. I'm um, code singer is raising his hand. Okay, okay, please go on. Code singer, go on. You can mute and speak. He typed his question in the chat. Bar. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. You know why didn't we just use string? Okay, like number. Okay, okay, my mic is faulty. Okay, yes, just like I said, this one is just is like an alternative method. You understand? You can as well instead of doing this, what we just did now, isn't it? You can as well come here and just say string, and then the symbol of your array. You still you are still good to go in fact me i even prefer this method than the other second one but i'm just showing you in case maybe you meet it somewhere you should know that they are practically the same thing you understand so uh i don't know i hope uh it has answered your question okay okay great great thank you so that is it for for array for arrays then if we come back let's go back to our note now there's also another type called any now if you are using if you are coding your typescript right and then you declare a variable as any let's say we come now here we we'll now say um const let's say my info right and now decide to give it a data type of any right let's say i just put any now what it simply means is that this variable can take in any data type it can take in string 
you can take in boolean you can take in number you can take in an array of either string an array of boolean or so that is what any actually means sorry is in small letter any so once i put any like this what i simply mean is that it can take array of any data type be it a number be it a string be it a boolean but if i just put any like this it means it can take the the distinct variable my info can take any data type it can take number 85. in fact i can come here again and i'll put my info and this time around i'll give it another variable a string this one should not give me an error why because here i say it can accommodate anything so i shouldn't get an error i can decide to come back again and change it and say okay well, my info i want it to be true it will still accept it so that is the use of this data type which is any of course according to them if somebody is using typescript there shouldn't be any need of the person using any since you are sure okay i want to actually make sure it's checking which data type i'm using whatsoever and all that so so that's it then another one you have is no implicit any <clears throat> now <clears throat> when they say no implicit any in typescript right you mustn't like in a, in a typescript if you do not put a data type for variable let's say i just come now and just put const uh is raining right and just give it a value now automatically typescript we assume that this my declaration is having a data type of any so far i did not give it any data type it will assume that it's having a data type of any so that's what it means by no implicit any so that's you did not state it implicitly so that one the program will be the one to now look at it and the program will be like ah, it means this guy wants any variable any uh, data type this variable to be able to take any data type so that's that's it for for this yes then let's let's look at the next one please anyway you don't understand you can always unmute your mic and then you 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 speak out now another important aspect we'll be looking at in this typescript is a what we call functions of course you know there's no like when it comes to programming you always meet functions one way or the other so how does typescript deal with functions now if you if you observe functions right you agree with me sorry let me it seems let me open this my run js this one is getting filled already aha uh -huh. good So just mark all these ones. Okay. Uh huh. So now, let's say uh, we have a function, maybe a add function. You know, normally in JavaScript we have something like this: function add, right? And then let's say the function is taking two parameters. Let's say n1 and n2. That's number one and number two, right? And then what is it going to do? Let's say it's going to return uh, n1 since it's adding plus n2 something like this right let me remove uh, the type checking of type because i actually put it to be checking for typescript that's why i see it's showing that this thing is showing so let me just remove it uh -huh. so that we don't have that issues so this is in javascript now if you observe this function we have a parameter We have a parameter and then we have what we have a return value so how does typescript now apply to a function parameter and a function return value is very easy now if we are to rewrite this same function in typescript what are we going to have of course the function keyword will still be there that one is normal then add the function name too will still be there that one is normal now when it comes to the parameter remember the parameters too are variables now since we are adding of course we are expecting n1 and n2 to be a number 
So for that reason, we are going to have N1, remember, your column, and then what type are we expecting? Number. Comma. Then N2, what type are we expecting? Also a number. Then, remember, for the return value, what number are we expecting? Now, if you check, if we are returning N1 plus N2, N1 is a number. N2 is a number as well. So if we are returning the addition of number and number, what should we be expecting? It means we, we should also be expecting a number as the return value. So we we'll give it a return value of number. So each a variable column, the data type, variable column, the data type, just like what we did here for all these ones, variable column, the data type, then after the whole thing, once you are done with the parameter, before you open your coily bracket, that's before you define or like give what the function should do. Immediately after the function name and parameter, you should give it a return type. Now, what type are we expecting this function to return? We're expecting it to return a number. So we have column number. And then from here, we can now have return n1 plus n2 right so this one let me comment this one out if you like we can even run the function add let's run it and see if it will work now you can see the function worked which is what 17 now let me show you something let's assume that we we'll now make one of them to be a a string don't don't mind this editor <laughs> the editor is not it's not like checking seriously for typescript if we are to check using this our own which of course we will soon start you find out that what is going to return to you is a type error it's going to return a type error so before we move to this place uh once we move to this place you see what i'm trying to say so if you decide to now put like, like maybe you put through here because of what is expecting right is actually expecting a number and not a boolean value is going to return a type error as well so but just like i said this run js do, does not really check for typescript i don't know uh, maybe it's a, a fault from the developer i can't really tell so this is the overall what you need to know about function the parameters how to give each of them what they are supposed to take their data type and also the return value now of course there are instances where the function you want does not have any return value maybe it's just console login it's not returning anything in that case the return value you can put it as none so we, let's say we have a function let's say function print name right and then here now let's say we are taking in the name parameter now of course name is what is a string isn't it of course we are printing out we are not returning any value so here now the return value we can put it as none then we open then maybe console.log name so if we are to use this function now we we'll just say print name and then we'll call maybe alx and then you can see we have it here which is alx so this is how to go about function that you know that is not returning any data type you just put the return type as none i think it should be small letter I don't think this capital letter. So, so that's that's it. Um, so please, I don't know. Is there any question before we we proceed? Sorry, what did you say? I say, is there any question? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay good. So now. If you go back here, you see that here, if you remember, you remember we did promises, right? Under our sync, await, and all those ones, ES6 promises. So now in a situation where your function is returning a promise, in that case, what you are going to have, let's say we have function promise, isn't it? And then this function now, let's say we are expecting it to to return a promise uh yes it's not taking any parameter but it's, it will certainly return a promise then how are we going to do it it's going to be like this is what are we, what is our function returning is returning a promise right then you have to specify 
The promise is returning. Is it a string? Is it a number? Or is it a boolean? Let's assume the promise we are expecting this function to return. Let's say is a string. Of course, what is going to go into this place will be a string. And then in this case, what are we going to have? We are going to have return maybe uh, let's say uh, alx. So in this case now, the return value of this function will be a promise. And the return type that is expecting or the return type is going to expect is a string. If what you are returning, the promise you are returning is a number, then here will just be a number. Yeah, of course, what you are, will be returning here should be a number, let's say 25. So that is for, for promises. Then the last one we have is anonymous functions. Now, I don't know if you guys remembered when we were doing ELX basics, right? ES6 basics. You remember we talked about arrow functions, where I say arrow functions are anonymous functions. That is, they are functions without name. But in, in a situation where maybe you need to call them, you can give them a name, right? Where I say, okay, you can have... Now, let's say we have something like this. Return 5. Now, whether you like it or not, this is a function. But this is an anos, uh, anonymous function. What's an anonymous function? A function without a name. Now, how do we know that this is a function? Good. We can only know that this is a function if we can call it. And here, because the function doesn't have a name, there's no way we can call it. Now, how can we call it here? It's very easy to call it. If we want to call it directly. Now, after the function, we just include this. Ah, this is no work. Wait, oh, let, let me let me confirm. <laughs> good good so how do i return this function of course i'll put the whole function inside the parameter despite the fact the function doesn't have a name i'll put everything inside this opening and close bracket right this is the function this is it opening and close and here i'm going to use this one to call it you know your function like this one now if i if i'm going to call this function this promise you know i'm going to call it by the name promise right and then I'm going to use this one to call it, this two bracket. So it's the same thing with this one too. Of course, the everything here, I'll package it inside this two bracket as one. And if I want to call it, I'll now use this two bracket to call it. Now let's assume this function is taking a parameter. Let's say it's taking a parameter of maybe x. And then it's returning the parameter, let's say uh, x plus 2, isn't it? Now it means if I'm calling it, I need to pass the argument inside here which of course i can maybe pass 50 so now of course if i'm passing 50 what will happen here 50 plus 2 so we we'll have 52 so this kind of functions are called anonymous functions so for anonymous functions right you don't need to actually pass in your data type the data types are automatically given by typescript and the reason why this is this is is because you know normally if you are creating if you want to use an, an anonymous function it, it usually used to be with arrays right with arrays method let's say like your map method now let's say you have something like maybe an array let's say const right array let's say maybe two four uh six and eight right and then we want to now use a map method on this array you know what we are going to have is array let's create another one const new array equal to then we'll call a map method and then inside of this map method now we'll call it on this previous array which is arr dot map now what is the map now what we are trying to say is here is that for every element here that you are mapping from this array give it a distance of x a value of x now this value of x what do we want to do now this map method the second thing it does is to accept a function now what do we want to do now if you look at in this situation here instead of we to come and create a function and then call the function inside of the map we can just introduce our anonymous function here and then we can decide to say it should always return uh, x uh, maybe plus 10 right uh, so here now we can now print the our new array and see what we are going to have so you can see that for every of these elements here 
is having is adding 10 to it for instance 2 now has become 12 2 plus 10 12 4 now has become 14 6 now has become 16 and 8 now has become 18 so in this situation if we are to write something like this in typescript we don't need to suffer ourselves and come here and be giving it type like number or whatever it is yes we don't need to do that inside of where we are calling the anonymous function typescript automatically we do that itself uh -huh. so that is uh, what they are trying to say here under anonymous uh, function so i don't know if anybody has maybe a question or maybe something is not clear Can you go over to anonymous function again, please? Okay, okay, okay. Let me go over it. Now, when we say anonymous function, when we say, okay, some, something is anonymous, right? It means it's unknown. It's unknown, right? So, now, there are functions they call anonymous functions. And those functions are available in any programming language. Like, in Python, you have something like Lambda. Now, lambda is an anonymous function in Python. You can go and make more research on it. Because it's a function that you don't need to actually use a name for it. You can just call it straight up and it's going to do the work for you. So, now, ordinarily, if you want to create a function, we we'll say function, let's say, my name. And let's say the function is accepting a parameter, says uh, name, right? And then, what is it returning? Let's say it's returning the name which is my name isn't it now if you want to call this function you know it will be the name of the function my name and then the parameter which of course here will pass alx isn't it and then what is going to happen is that it will print alx for us because here that's what we are actually returning we are returning whatsoever is being uh, put inside here so when you talk of this function now is known how is it known is known by the name but there are other kind of functions that they are anonymous you don't need to know their name for you to execute them now for this function i need to know the name before i'm able to execute it here but for other functions like anonymous function you don't need to know the name and how do anonymous function come they always come in this form you have a two bracket open and close then you have an arrow this bracket is taking in any parameter it could also be empty that is in a situation where the function is not taking any parameter then this arrow is simply pointing you to what should be done just like this one this coily bra uh, bracket is pointing you to what is happening inside the function that's how this arrow too is trying to point you to that okay after me anything you see here is what the function is going to do so if we are to write this same function but using an anonymous function, what we are going to have here is going to be name. So you have this. Of course, it will take in a parameter because this one is taking in a parameter of name. So it will take in a parameter name and then it's going to return name. Because this is, I I, I don't know. Uh, have you watched, have, did you follow EX Basics? Because I think we explained this very well in EX Basics, ES6 yeah, Basics. Yes, I want it. Okay, okay, Tom, no problem. So now this is this function is doing the same thing with this. The only difference, this is an anonymous function, a function without a name. This one is a function with a name. So if we remove this function now, if I want to call this function, right? Just like I said, first of all, I need to protect it with a bracket. And then I need to now use these two coily brackets. To call it just like how this one this is the name of the function and we use this one to call it now since the function is accepting a parameter of course i have to give it a parameter here and the parameter is a string so i'll give it a string let's say software engineering and then you can see here what we now have is the function printing software engineering so now mostly these are an anonymous functions they are mostly used in array methods or with array methods most of times they are used with array method so in a situation where you are calling an anonymous function inside an array method you don't need to specify the type 
of both the parameter is accepting and also the return value for TypeScript. TypeScript automatically will do that for you. So I don't I don't know if that have answered your question. Yeah, is this still TypeScript? I'm not seeing type for that name. And that's what I'm saying. For is anonymous you... functions, right? Are you hearing me? Yeah. For anonymous function in TypeScript, you don't need to. You understand? Okay. Yes, you don't. For this normal function, okay. you have to. That's in this case, name, you have to put string. What is he returning? Is returning a string. So name, variable name is a string, which is the parameter. Why the function itself is returning what? A string. Because definitely what is returning, the name is returning is a string. But for your anonymous function, you don't need to do all this. The TypeScript, it's not as if if you do it, it will not work. Oh. You understand? But the TypeScript, the way they have designed the TypeScript, it will do it by itself. Automatically, it will do that. Well, you understand? Okay. Good. Yes. Good. So you know now we, we we've, we've talked about normal primitive data type. We've talked about arrays. We've talked about functions. Now let's look at object types, right? Now if you look at objects in JavaScript, you know you have something like this. Uh, we have maybe uh, const my info, right? And then this is my info now. You have something like this. Maybe name. Right? Let's see. Uh, git. And then after my name, let's say age. Let's say like 54. Right? So this one is in JavaScript. Now, if you are trying to do object in TypeScript, right? Now, this is what you do sorry so properties and then types so now how do we do that you have this same object we have something like this const my info right and then what we are going to have is name now what is name name is string right age what is age hello what is age number number I think this should be comma. Sorry. Uh, so name is string, age is number. So you have to first of all do this. Then and that's why that is where we now bring us into this interface because when when you are dealing with object, it's always of importance to use either interface or types. So is this one now that will now land us into uh, what we call interfaces and and all that. So, but we'll still, we'll still come to that. But this is how you deal with objects. The properties should always carry the types. The object name itself will not carry anything. And the reason why is because an object can contain different data types. Array, string, number, boolean. So, but the properties itself must carry a, a data type. Now, let's say we want to add another one, maybe a boolean. We can say is uh, maybe uh, young. Right? Of course, we are expecting a true or a false here. So we give it data type of Boolean. Yes. So um so this this is it. This is it for for objects, but we'll still uh, go deeper. Then now for object, there's another thing they call optional properties. Now you know if you are declaring an object, right? Let's say now we have this object here, and then you want to pass in values. For the object, isn't it? Let's say you want to pass in value now for the object. In this situation, you know, you can say maybe my info uh, dot name and then you give it a name. Let's say ALX, isn't it? Then also, you want to give this H a value. You can say my info maybe dot H. And then you give it maybe 25 like that like that now 
you can do it in such a way that you can actually have this object you can decide not to give it an age and the object will still be valid that is you declare a particular property but the property is not needed is an optional something whether you like you fill in you fill it in whether you like you don't fill it in so for instance let's say okay you are creating an account right now you find out that if you like you can decide to upload a status and if you like you can decide not to upload a status on some website you you will find out that your profile picture too is optional if you like you can decide to put your profile picture if you like you can decide not to put but there are things that are not optional for instance your name you have to put put a name that one is is not optional at all you have to put a name and then sometimes your email too is not optional but things like maybe profile picture status you find out that most of the times they are optional so to declare an optional property in an object you just use the question mark immediately after the property the next thing that follows is a question mark so once you see an object property like this in typescript what is telling you is that this particular property is optional thus while creating the object you can omit it there will not be issue the object will still be created so that is what it it simply means that's your optional um what are they calling it optional properties yes so why let's go to let's see union types now if you are talking of union types don't worry when we start the tax task all these things we now start you you start you get you get to understand it more so when you talk of union types let's say i want to declare a variable right let's say const um any info right and then the variable that i'm declaring i'm expecting that the person that is going to enter information into the variable there's a, every possibility that the very uh, the the information could be a number or it could be a string so in that situation i'm expecting that a string or a number so in that case how am i going to define the data type in typescript i'll use my column and union now how do we use the union here let's say we're expecting a number as well as a string so you use this straight line and you do it like this so const any info what data type either a number or a string so in this case if you decide to pass in a number let's say 52 it will not return an error and if you decide to pass in a string also let's say alx it will not still return an error because it's still within the data type that is expecting which is either a number or a string so that is a uh, union for you union types then there's another type they call it type alias right they call it okay type alias is a name for any any type that is so now let's say for instance um i want to give okay let me let me use this scenario let's say i want to give a data type of id right and that id now you know there are some id that are numbers there are some id that are strings of numbers plus letters so in that case you can't actually say the id is a string you can say is a, a you can't say it's a number sorry but you can say it's a string so i can decide to say okay oh, i want to create another type now another type that will accommodate both number and string but i don't want to use just uh i don't want to be putting number and that line then string i want to have a type that is dedicated to number uh, and string now how do i do that that's where your type comes in now i can decide to say type id now right or let's say id mm, or capital letter id i can say type id now should be equal to a string or a number so what i'm saying here now let's say i want to now create a variable that we accept both string and number now i've already declared id to be a kind of type that will carry string that will support both string and number so next when i want to use string and number instead of declaring string and number this way i can as well just declare it as a type of id so i can come here now and say const id will carry a data type of id then equal to i can maybe give it 54. so here what i'm trying to say here is that 
the data type of id now that i'm expecting is id and what is id i've declared id as a type to be of a string or of a number so this is more like you are customizing your data type so i i don't know if if you guys understand yeah yeah okay sorry if i say guys or i mean both guys and girls you know it's just like bible you always use man uh -huh, but it means both. Yeah, yeah we are guys yeah. all right all right good so yeah. so so that is id yeah that's a uh, type aliases for you good so now we are now in interfaces so interfaces declaration to name object type so now most of times interfaces is used for objects that's why if you look at what they ask us here to do they say write an interface named student that accept the following element first name last name age location so if you are let's say now we need to create an object right and then the object should be um okay let's say uh information right so we can create an interface and how do you create an interface use the keyword interface like this and then what, what is the name of my interface i'll call it student info and then this student info i want it to take let's say first name of course it should be what a string name should be a string then i want it to take in also last name of course last name should still be a string i also want it to take age of course age should be a number and then finally i want it to take uh maybe um is um is graduate so have this student graduated of course it will accept a boolean which is we are expecting a true or a false then we can add another optional another optional parameter we can say okay sports sports person that is the person is he a sports person i'll put a question mark of course a sports person we are expecting true or false that's yes or no is still a boolean so what we have just done here is that we have given it we have created an interface and we've called the interface student info and this student info now it has property of first name which has a data type of string property of last name which has a data type of string property of age which has a data type of number property of is graduate which has a data type of boolean and then an optional property this question mark now makes this one to be an optional property of sports person which is also a boolean now if we are to use this interface right of course you know i told you that interface are used uh, for objects so if we are to use this interface now to create an object i can say okay const student info now if you see right one of the things i i saw in the documentation is that when they are creating an interface they always start from capital letter but when they are now creating an object to match that interface they start from small letter so if you check here now student info s capital i capital but here which is now the object which i want to create student info you can see the s is what small not letter. Again, no. it's small letter you understand so in this case const student info of course remember after your variable comes what comes the type column what type now we want to use the type of this interface which is what student info student info and then it's going to be called what remember the first name is what we can say the first name here will be uh alx don't mind me comma last name last name we can say software engineering comma then age we can say i don't know it's as if alx is three years old but it might be more than then is graduate of course have we graduated false then sports person is alex a sports person <laughs> yeah is it for sports person no time for sports. Yeah, no, good no time for sports so we put false 
Now, if we are to print out this our object, we will call student info. And then you can see it here. Let me make this one large. You can see first name ALX, last name software engineering, H3 is graduate force, sports person force. So you can see that interface is doing exactly what uh, <clears throat> type is doing. You remember what we did for our type? You know type 2, that's what we did. We did type, right? ID. We now say that this ID should be of which type? Should be of string or what? Number. Right? That's what we did. Then we now created a variable. We created a variable ID, right? And then we now say the ID should have a data type of what? This is our ID. And it should be equal to what? Let's say uh 2x45 maybe t45 right and then if we call id what are we going to have you, you see we have this one here and if we decide to come here and change this one to normal number let's say 22514 you see that we have the number so it's just that id now you see we used id for a variable but we are using interface now for an object but it does not mean you cannot use interface for a variable. It's just that it's suitable to use interface for an object. So you can see that in our object creation, because this port person is optional, we can om omit it and remove it. If we remove it, we will still be good. Because here it is optional. It will not throw an error for us. But if we were to remove this one, and if this environment was to be strict, this environment is not really strict with TypeScript. If the environment is to be strict, it will show us that there's an issue with the creation of this object. Why? Because one of the important properties is missing. So just like I say, by the time we start task, we we'll look at all of these things together. So that is ID and that is interface. So let's look at, okay, good, differences between type and interface. So it's a interface extends. I'll still talk about this extend. Type intersects then new fields can be added to interface not possible in types so <clears throat> now if we look at um um i'm this okay so before we get to this place before we get to this place this one here right let's go back to our task and see what we can do now we'll start with the first one mm. now this one says as you can see here i'm going to remove everything here that's uh, 44 dd right? mm -mm. 44 dd uh okay i'm to take it to the top uh -huh. 44 dd good so now it says write an interface are you seeing it remember what we just finished writing now interface so write an interface named student so interface name student if you observe you find out that the student starts from capital letter s that accepts the following element so what is our interface accepting they say it's accepting first name and they say the first name is a what string right now the next one they say it's accepting what last name and then the last name is also what a string then next they say is accepting h and the h is a number next they say is accepting what location and the location is also a string right now this is the interface we have just created they now say create two students are you seeing it we have to create two students and create an array named student list containing the two variables so first of all we need to create two students of course we have to create the two students from this interface so const student one i'll use stdu one remember what will be the data type of stdu one it will be the interface we just created which is what student right now it's going to be equal to what now we want to start creating with the properties the first name of our student is going to be what let's say this one is emmy right the last name of course let's say 
um, software engineer right then age let's say um, I have lived, lived a very long time 1000 years and then location let's say uh, Nigeria right so this is the first student we have created using our interface now the second student will create const stdu i'll use stdu2 now what will be the data type of course it should be the interface student and what is it going to be now we have first name this one now let me use let me use gits right last name of course, let me use software engineer. Age, me to have lived a, a long time, 1000. And then location, let's say uh, Kenya. Yes, Kenya, yes. So now we have created two students. Now look at what they say. They say we should now put the two students, they say create an array named student list containing the two variables. So now we'll create an array const and what was the name okay this is student list yeah. right now i want to ask a question what should be the type data type of this array yeah. student hmm? Okay. Beautiful. So, what's your question? Okay, this is my question. You know, we created this interface students. We created two students from this our interface students one and student two. And now, based on ALX, that we should now create an array called student list that we contain the variable students one and student two. So, I'm now asking what will be the type of this student student list now if you look at it yeah, string. ma you say string. okay <clears throat> okay good good now if you, the type will be object good oh. good now it will be object and object from which interface from interface of what student, student, student. Of course. good and if you remember what we say right it will not just be student but an array of students because we are putting these two inside of the of our is array we are creating so it will not just be interface of students but array of the interface of students do you guys get right. like are you clear okay. okay let me no. come again right now you know we have two variables here that we created from student interface which is what stu1 and stu2 right the two we are created from this interface student now they now say we should create an array right we should name the array student list and then the array of student list should occupy the two students we are going to create like this so now i'm now asking that okay the return type what will be the data type of this student list of course you guys rightly said is going to be student which of course is true because that's what is containing student one student one is from student is also containing student two student two two is from student but this time around, because it's a list, so you remember what we normally do. If you check when we started, right? You know, for where is it? Uh, okay, it's not here. If you remember when we started, you know, we say for things like maybe const array of string, right? You know, it's going to be, we say the type is going to be what? It's going to be string like this with an array symbol, isn't it? Then we have maybe something like this elx right uh pld and so and so so now here also what we are going to have is an array of what of this student interface so do you guys get 
Yeah. Uh-huh. So here now, we now have student, but an array of it. So equal to, so we now have stu1, comma, stu2. So this is the next one, containing two variables. Then I'll say, using vanilla JavaScript, render a table for each. So all this one is all those documents.append, document.create. Me, it's ChatGPT that I just used to run this one. Because God yeah, God that was where I was having the issue. Yes, yes. So, and even at that, self, like still, you will not be able to display it because there's no HTML file. But when I tested it here on this run JS, right, everything displayed. So in this general, because here, what you have to do first, you have to create a table, then you have to now create row, then you have to create uh, uh, this thing. You create table, you create row, and then you create uh, uh, what are they calling it? That's each of the boxes. So you now append the value inside the box, append the box inside the row, append the row inside the table, and finally return the table. So all those ones. <laughs> uh, but this is the main thing they ask us to do. And if you do this one properly, right? Look at what they say. When running, web pack should return no type errors found. So now, how do we know? Let me save. Let me save this uh, work, and then let me run it. Now they say to run uh, this their thing. They say the npm run start def right, and then enter. So let's see the reply we are going to have. Now what do you see here? What do you see they wrote here? No type errors. No type errors found so this is just what alx wants so once you compile your code and it has this know that you are good to go all these errors are due to the fact that we don't have look at it we don't have an entry point which of course is supposed to be an index dot uh, html you understand so now let's go and temper with something inside of the code and come and rerun it and see let's temper with something so let's assume that instead of student here let's use string let's save and then let's run it let's see what it's going to give us now what do you see you see that it did not show us this you know previously here that's before we run the this thing where is it safe you know it showed no type errors found but in this second one you see there was a type error so look at the messages giving us here it says type this blah 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 error type string is not assignable to type student so in this case now it means there's an error with our type so that is what elx are trying to say that any code you are running in this one you should make sure it always return that other one so if you go back now and make correction and give it the appropriate type which is student and then we go back and then run it Let's see what we have. So you see, no type errors found. So we are good to go. So any question? Uh, I have a question. Okay, please go on. No. So in Exchange, you are saying um, TypeScript work with um, HTML and stuff like that. Yes. 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 Just like how you use JavaScript. Like, let's say now you want to build a React app with TypeScript. It's just... Like just like I say, if you look at all the code we have been writing, right? Let me if you look at all the code we wrote here, the only difference here is the fact that we have to always be giving each of our variable a type. You understand? If not, yeah. it's still JavaScript you are writing. Are you getting me? Yeah. Yes, yes. So So, so that, like um TypeScript is just like the um type annotation for Python. Good. Exactly exactly you are right you are right so so that's it now if you check this next one now that he asks us to do right um blah 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 create a directory so, Sorry, you say he said type annotation for python be javascript okay no he was trying to say you know just like how python has variable annotations so the same work variable annotations mm -hmm. is doing in python is what TypeScript is now doing in JavaScript. JavaScript, yes. 
So that's what he's, he's trying to say. You understand? So now if you look at this next one, it's, it's almost the same thing they want us to do. So me, I'm just going to copy. Okay. I'll just copy this tag zero and give it <laughs> and give it another name. Give it task one so that somebody will not have to do all those plenty wala. Oh to recursively. Aha. Uh -huh. So C D tax one. Uh -huh. Good. So uh, Vim me. Uh -huh. So 50 DD. Good. So now the next one, they say we should do it inside tasks one. So that's why I just that's what I just did sharp sharp now. So they say copy blah blah. Mm, this one I've copied them everything once. So now they say we should create another interface, right? They say these two attributes should only be modifiable when teacher is first initialized. So do you see what they are asking now? That is only at point of initialization first name and last name should be modified once the object have been created the those two things should not be modifiable so it means that you know normally with objects once you create an object you can still change the the properties of the object the value of the properties of the object you can still change it even after creating it uh, for instance if you have if you have something like this right where is it uh -huh. now here we can come here and say student info right dot name dot first name now instead of um alx we can say it should now be equal to alu isn't it now if we come down and now print student info look at what we have now you see here we are able to change from alx to alu are you guys seeing it yeah good so but what they are now asking us what alex is now asking us here is that we should declare first name and last name in such a way that after we must have created it just like how we created this one sorry just like how we created this one once you have created it coming again to change it it will not be possible now there's something like that in in typescript which is called read only let me i think i have it here yes so where is it good look at it other properties sorry other properties here you can see read only can only be initialized at runtime afterwards value can't be changed so in that in once creating an object in typescript once you want a particular property of the object to only be a to to that's after creating it you should not be able to change it the property you use for it is what is called read only so in this situation we have an interface right interface call they say we should use teacher right now the teacher they say should accept a uh, first name they say the first name is a string last name they say the last name too is a string but something interesting they say now we should do it in such a way the first name and last name cannot be changed after the object have been initialized so in that situation what you use is what we call read only read only so for the last name too we'll do the same thing read only so now let's see now the next property is this let me be doing copy and paste so that will be will be fast so this one they say it should be a boolean The next one years of experience they say it should be a number okay then I think the final one location they say it should be a string so yeah so this is it so now what next did they say we should do they say add the possibility to add any attribute to the object like contract boolean without specifying the name of the attribute good so this is another one in fact i even forgot to take note of that yes i don't think it's here 
I forgot to take note of that. So now, look at what they say. Add the possibility to add any attribute to the object like this without specifying the name of the attribute. So in this case now, right? In this case now, we they want us to add uh, 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 a possibility where in the creation of objects, we can actually give it more than the properties here. Now in that situation, the syntax I saw was we are having, you have something like this, and then something like this, it will take in two things. You can you name you can name it with any parameter of your choice, any parameter. Uh -huh. So 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 this is it, right? You have like here now, isn't it? You can have the key or property. I told you that anything you can use anything. You can use property. You can use key. So let me use property. And that property now, what will be the data type of the property? Is going to be a string. Now, the reason why I put a string is that if you are dealing with objects in JavaScript, all of your property names are being converted into a string. Let me show you an example of that. Now, if you check here, right, you see we created this object. Now, each of these property of this object now will be converted to a string. So, that's why here too, since we are dealing with TypeScript, you need to indicate what is the data type of the name of the property. Now, each of these names of property, they are string. So, that's why here too, we are giving it a data type of string. And then, remember, I told you guys that what we want to create, we want to be it in such a way we can, or we should be able to create uh, any property name with any value. So, that's why here we are giving it any. Now, if we mistakenly give it, okay, let's give it any here and then run this code and see. So, what is going to happen is that in this interface, we have only first name, last name, full-time employee, years of experience, and location, right? Why in the object we are creating, we have just, we have first name, full-time employee, last name, location, contract. Now, there's no contract in this interface, but here we are having contract. So, to accommodate any additional property, we are going to be given in the creation of our of our object this is how you go about it you put it inside a square bracket the property this one can be anything it mustn't be property why use properties because so that the name will match with what they, they are calling all these ones so property it could be prop it could be key it could be anything of your, your liking then string then what data type any what we are trying to say is that we can add to our object creation any kind of property name and type that's all we actually mean here so now let's run this code let's save and run this code and see what we are going to have now you see it shows no type errors found so now let's go back now instead of any here let's make it in such a way this one can only accept number now remember what we added here is actually having a type of boolean so, but here now, we say anything you are adding, it has to have a data type of number. So, let's compile now and see if it's going to work. So, you see, it has thrown error. You see, it's throwing error for us. It says type force is not assignable to type number. So, that is how robust TypeScript is. So, for we to accommodate anything here, we just have to use any. And here, why if you check here, the interface have years of experience. Why here in the creation, there's no years of experience. Why? Because we have made years of experience to be optional by adding this question mark at the front. So, I don't know. Uh, is it clear? Does anybody have any question? Clear. Clear, all right. All right, so... So that's it for this one. That's the whole thing they want us to do here. Now let's check this next one. This next one says, write an interface named directors. I think it's the same file. This file we just finished with. So let's go back to the file. Now they say write, okay, write an interface called directors. Of course, we already know how to write our interface. So we have interface, right? Direct toss now look at what they say directors that extends teacher now this is one of the things i'm supposed to talk about here that i say let's just start 
and then along the line you see you see here when we're talking about differences between types and interface we say interface extends type intersects now what do we mean by extent like if we come here now right let's say we have this interface already student information right or let me uh, yes let me just reduce it to just this uh, student information then let's say we now have another interface right now this next interface we want to use in such a way that we still need first name last name and age of the student it's just that we want to add more properties to it so maybe this time around we'll call this one we'll call it interface let's say student additionals or student extra yes let me use student extra so now of course still we still need the first name the last name and the age of the student now we don't need to come back here and start declaring first name again last name again age again before we now start putting the other extra things we need since we already have first name last name and age inside of the student info what we just need to do is that we just extend the student info so we'll do interface student extra we'll now extend student info so what we are trying to say here is that everything inside of student info bring it inside of student extra for us so now we cannot decide to now add maybe we we'll say is maybe skilled right this one we should say it should be a boolean yes isn't it then maybe uh is let's say educated also a boolean right then let's say maybe role this one we should say is a string so now if you want to create student extra now right if you want to create student extra now we can say const student extra one right equal to now of course student extra one should be from the type of the interface for of for the student extra which is what student extra and then it should be equal to what remember despite the fact student extra here is not showing us first name last name and age but because we are, we've extended student info it means everything inside here for student info is also inside here available for student extra so here we'll now give it a first name let's say alx right we'll give it a last name that's uh swe software engineering we'll give it h let's say four years and then now we can now come down and start giving it the main one for the student extra which is what is is skilled right is killed we we'll put through is educated we we'll put through and then lastly rule right we are expecting a string so we'll say captain yes so now if we call our student extra you can see first name last name H is killed, is educated, and then rule. So that is the beauty of extension. So that's why that's what ELX now asks us to do here. That extends teacher. You know, we already we have already created teacher here. And the now say we should extend teacher, and then say it requires an attribute named this. Now, what they are now saying that the director now interface, right? The director interface should extend teacher and then the director interface itself it should contain this one this property i'll copy it and paste to save time and then this property according to them it will have a type of number so what is happening here is that everything inside of teacher here will also be available for director and that's why you see here when they were creating the director let me copy and paste when they were creating director here you can see that they added 
first name inside of the interface of director there's no first name there's no last name there's no location there's no full-time employee there but there's no you look at there's number of reports but these four are not there but if you look at we are extending from teacher and then the teacher interface itself have all those things it has first name it has last name it has location and it has full-time employee so right now if we now compile right let's see if it's going to compile now you can see no type errors found but let's say for instance we do not extend this teacher we do not extend it right and we just did this now let's see the feedback is going to give us now you see it's throwing error for us you see object literal may only specify known properties and first name does not exist in types director so so that is the beauty of actually uh, having your interface you can always extend them to get a, a property of previous or other interface so so i don't know is there any question uh no i don't have a question but i have an observation okay please go ahead so um like in excellence for what, from what i've seen so far yeah this um interface and object working is just similar to javascript classes good this extends good. stuff on yes yes good say so, say so you get it now yeah uh -huh. so so that's 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 it so this one too is is virtually the same thing the only difference is that now this one they are saying we should write a function but it's still same inside this uh task one oh, directory and so they say they say write a function print teacher it accepts two arguments first name and last name of course function right print teacher so remember we are writing typescript and they say should accept two arguments which is what first name and since we are set, we are writing typescript name is always string so first name will be string last name two two is going to be a string isn't it so look at what they say it returns what the first letter of the first name and the full last name what does that tells you if it's returning a name it means what is our function returning our function is returning a string so we have something like this So first name is string, last name is string. Those are the two parameters. Then the function itself is returning a string. So from here now, they say it should return. Return. Now, if you look at what we have here, they say it should return the first alphabet. Look at the two parameters. They pass in John. They call print teacher. They pass in John and they pass in do. But now what they are printing out is just the first one here. And then complete of this one so it means that i remember string right we can there are different things we can actually use and uh, to get it there are different things we can actually use to get it so let's try i want us to try something right and uh, you know me i like testing things so let's say we have const um, name and then name is uh let's say git right now let's say name at index zero now what do you see so you see that string behave like array in javascript so once you say the name of your string and you pass in an index it's going to take for index of zero it will give you the first digit for index of one it will give you the second digit i for index of two it will give you the third digit which of course here is d so it means that in this our code too we can utilize that so since we are expecting just the first of first name we can say it should return for us inside of string litra right it should return for us first name at index zero and then space and then last name so last name so i think this should work that's why the fact that this one is just compilation we are bothered on and um, but if this one is where to be uh, read this thing now this should work 
So even if I call the function here, it will not still print anything for us. So here. So remember the parameter first name is a string type string last name type string the return of the function too should be a string because what we are returning is actually a string so then let's run our code and see okay so type error type error what could be the issue so it is a cannot find name this do you need to install type okay and does that mean TypeScript does not support uh, string literals? Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've seen, I've seen my mistake. Uh, I've seen my mistake. This is it. I do not close this one. Hello, bro. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I've been talking since. I've been trying to tell you that this um, brace. Okay. Yeah, that was what I was, I was okay. trying to tell you before you compiled. Okay, sorry. I did not hear you. Like, it's just now I'm hearing you. I, I've been talking of telling you that there's a bug, there's a bug. Okay, honestly, I did not hear. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. All right. So let's compile now. I hope it's it works as expected. Beautiful. No type errors found. So so that's it. That's it for this one. Printing teachers. So writing a class. All right. Uh, write a class name. Good. So now if you look at, we have dealt with functions, we have dealt with, uh, okay, where is it? We have dealt with functions, we have dealt with, with objects, right? We have dealt with array and the rest. So now we are going into classes. So let's see how does TypeScript treat classes. So this one, okay, thank God, is still the same task. So we are still maintaining this, our file. So now they say, write a class named student class. Now look at what they gave. The constructor accepts first name string, last name string argument. The class has a method named work on home work that returns the string. The class has a method named display name. It returns the first name of the student. The constructor of the class should be described through an interface. I seen it. The class should be described through an interface. So it means here they want us to create two interfaces. An interface for the class, an interface for the constructor. So if that's the case, we can say interface. Interface for class, right? So interface for class. Remember, I told you I, I always use capital letter for interface and then small letter for the main thing like that so what is interface for class now if you are dealing with class classes right the interface of a class should always be the class methods now if you look at this work on homework is one of the class method so we'll bring it here and because it's a method you know method is just like function too and it's just that it's a function that has been called on a particular object so and then what is he returning if you look out according to what they say here they say that return the string currently working means is returning a string and then the second method for that same class is what they say is display name so what is display name now to display name to because if you look at what they say here, say it returns the first name of the student. Of course, we all know that the name of the student is also a string. So it means it's returning, the method is returning a string too. So this is for the class interface. Now, for the constructor interface, right? I'm going to use capital letter. Constructor, right? Good. Now, for your constructor interface, what you are going to do, or what you are putting inside, should be okay 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 sorry yes constructor thank you thank you so for the constructor now right you can see that it has two distinct which is what first name and last name which is first name is a string last name is a string so here too we have first name string last name string so now let's check what did they now say constructor of the class should be described through an interface the class should be described through an interface so now 
for our class const class right give me some moment let me confirm uh, let me confirm something oh uh -huh. so because for classes i think it uh -huh, good so uh, i've seen what i'm looking for now for classes right what classes how you implement class unlike object you know object we just uh, do our interface and then after our interface the next thing we do is that we create an object with the type of that interface yes but if you are creating classes is quite different it's quite different now how you create classes is that you have uh let's say class right mm -mm. What is wrong with this? So we have class. Um, what will be the name of our class? Self. Uh -huh, look at it. They say the name should be student class. So class student class, and then this student class now. It will now is now going to implement. That's the keyword you use. Implement. What is the interface of the class? Class. I don't know if 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 we're on the same page yeah good so it's going to implement class and then implement class now we are now going to open our normal bracket so of course you know after your class the first thing you need to implement is your what your constructor are we getting so constructor now Now this constructor, remember the constructor also have his own interface, and the interface I told you of a constructor is always the parameter of the constructor. Now since already here, we have the parameter of the constructor. If like there is no interface for constructor, we can just come here and then impute our constructor argument, which is first name, the type, which will be string. And then last name the type which is a string but since they say we should do it through an interface it means our constructor will take in an argument you can use anything here i just decided to use ax to show that it's an argument it will take in an argument of the type of the interface of the constructor and what is the type of the interface of the constructor is constructor in capital letter constructor so now also of course you know in your constructor you need to give it all its value like this dot this so now we we'll have this so this dot now what is the first one of course the first one is first name this dot first name now this first name is going to be called what remember this interface that we have here is an object look at it is an object object of first name and the object of last name having property of first name and last name now now if you look at here now we are now saying okay let this argument be of the type constructor so it means in essence in place of this argument this argument is like equal to this constructor here so how can we assess each of this one from this argument is going to be ax dot now what is for this first name what do we want to get first name first name right then the yeah. other one the next one this dot last name equal to ask what do you want to get dot last name so i don't know like hope you guys do you guys get it yeah okay good then remember our method is to be called inside of our class we are we are supposed to create it inside of our class and here they say um method work on homework should return what currently working so we have this method right and what is he returning they say should return currently working let me just do copy and paste so we are done with this method like this then the next method they say what it should be display name and it should return what 
returns the first name of the student so we have display name method and then according to them it should return the first name now to return the first name you see that the value of the first name we have given it to what this dot first name so the variable this dot first name is the noun the one now carrying the first name of the person so we have this dot first name so this is what they actually ask us to do this is what they ask us to do so now uh, let's confirm whether our type is is good so let's run it and see oh god so they say property first name does not exist on type student class last name does not exist on type student class property first name does not exist on type student class so let's go back to the code and confirm something now uh i think one of what uh, the things i observed while dealing with classes most especially if your constructor has his own interface right in that situation now what we need to do is to now manually bring in these two inside of this code here but i'm also thinking something that can we actually extend a class with constructor now let's try it class extends constructor right now let's check and see if it will compile it did not oh 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 Oh, 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 is it that we, okay, let me see, this is one, two, three, four, right, so let me say four DD, and then let me paste it here, so let's try it, and see, it's still giving the same error, so it means that, in that case, the arrangement is not the problem, and extending it will not solve it so it means we just have to make mention of the property inside of our class so if we come inside our class now we have to make a uh, mention of property of uh, this property of this dot first name and also this dot last name so this dot first name right or instead of this dot first name first name should be a string of course it's returning the type string and then last name should be also a string so why must we go this way now because of the constructor is being implemented through an interface class 2 is implemented through an interface so the class is not recognizing first name and last name you understand if you remember just like those uh, two constructors we created here before we extended them you know we created two this one and this one you know before we extended them we couldn't like combine these two together but because we were able to extend this one now we are now having the whole of this one inside of this but in this case now for classes so you see we tried extending it the thing did not work so another solution is that since this student class is not recognizing first name and last name we just have to like declare it inside of the class like this first name with return type of string last name with return type of string so in this way now when this function wants to call this return this dot name or this constructor wants to get this it will recognize its presence inside of the class so let's let's confirm this by running this check so you can see what we have now no type errors found so i don't know is there any any question We've come clear. Okay, okay.